Once upon a time, there were nine planets in our solar system, though some people claim that somewhere out there was a mysterious tenth planet, Planet X. In 2006, Pluto was demoted to dwarf planet status, a hotly contested move that left the solar system with eight official planets. But this week, researchers published their argument that somewhere out there is another large planet that we haven't seen yet, a Planet Nine, which is not the same as Pluto and not the same as the old Planet X. Confused? Well, I promise you this is not an old Ed Wood film. Here to sort out the planet stuff are two scientists making the case for Planet Nine, Constantine Batygin and Mike Brown, both in the Division of Geological and Planetary Sciences at Caltech in Pasadena. Welcome to Science Friday. Thanks for having us, Ira. Yeah, happy to be here. Tell us, what is, what is the evidence that makes you think there's something out there? Well, what we have found is really a gravitational signature of Planet Nine. And that signature is seen in the most distant orbits of, of this uh, debris field beyond uh, the orbit of Neptune that we commonly refer to as the Kuiper Belt. If you look at the, out, the furthest orbits in, in this debris field, they all kind of swing out the same way. The only reasonable explanation for this confinement, this grouping of the orbits, is that there's a distant uh, planet nine, which is rather massive, keeping them together. Or as I like to say, we have felt a great disturbance in the force. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's good. Let me write that down. Yeah. Uh, how, how confident are you about this? Uh, that, that's always the, the, the hardest question to answer. As, as a scientist, you try really hard not to believe yourself too much because that's often where, where science goes wrong. And we spent a good year and a half out of the past two years not believing ourselves very much and actually trying very hard to prove that this idea was wrong and in fact crazy because it always sounds crazy when you say there's another planet. But after the initial hints, we have been finding more and more signatures exactly where we predicted. And it's it's getting to the point where we we believe it. We, we believe it enough that we're willing to write a paper and stand up and say, yes, for the past century, everybody who said there was a planet X is crazy and they were all wrong, but we're right. Hmm. Is, is it unusual to first see the evidence of a planet, not know where it is, not, not actually see it and then find it? I mean, wasn't Uranus or some of the other planets found that way? Uh, exactly right. Uh, there's, there's good historical precedent for this. Uh, in 1846, Neptune was discovered uh, through a, a rather similar method. It was first predicted through a mathematical model, a rather complex one, uh, which, as it's evidenced, used uh, the, the irregularities in the Uranian orbit. So, uh, you know, there's, there's good historical... Mm -hmm you know, context for this, uh, and we this now the astronomical search for Planet 9 is on. 1-844-724-8255, 844-724-8255, if you'd uh, like to get in on this. You can also tweet us. A, a tweet came in and already and asks, is it inside or outside of the Kuiper Belt, and how far away is the planet? <laughs> So, th so the Kuiper Belt, which of course is is where Pluto is, it's where a Eris, these other large objects, where the New Horizon spacecraft just just went through. The the Kuiper Belt is something like four to five billion miles away from the Sun. Planet Nine, at its closest approach to the Sun, is 20 billion miles away from the Sun, and it's on a very elliptical orbit. It goes all the way out to 100 billion miles away from the Sun. So Planet Nine is well outside of the Kuiper Belt, and we only see its effects on the sort of outer fringes of the Kuiper Belt, which is why it took us so long to, to realize that it was there. So what kind of orbit would it have? How, how long would it take to, to go around the sun once? That, that orbit is, is uh, somewhere between 10 and 20,000 years to go around the sun. And, it, and it's tilted by about 30 degrees compared to all of the other planets in the solar system. So a very strange, elongated sort of orbit out there. And how big is the object? Well, our computer models estimate the object at right around 10 Earth masses. So this is a uh, smaller brother, if you will, of uh, Uranus and Neptune. And, and is it a solid rocky one, or is it a gas one like Jupiter? 
No, it's, it's actually uh, something in between. Uh, we believe that this object was composed, was uh, created out of the same material that created Uranus and Neptune. So predominantly it's ice and rock, but probably about 10, uh, at most 20% of its mass is comprised of hydrogen and helium in sort of this extensive atmospheric envelope. And, and, and we say that just because that, that's actually a description also of Uranus and Neptune. So really mm -hmm. what we're saying is we think it's like Uranus and Neptune. What, what does it do to fulfill all those requirements we have now <laughs> to be called a planet? So, so there is the official lawyerly definition from the International <laughs> Astronomical Union, which I, I, I hate the definition, but I love the concept that it's trying to describe. I just think it's a clunky statement of the concept. The concept it's trying to describe is that basically planets are the things that are the gravitationally dominant objects in their region of a planetary system. And, you know, anything that you're going to find by its gravitational influence is is uh, almost by definition part of, of that criterion. But but really, if you actually went for the official lawyerly definition, uh, it fits well within mm -hmm. that too. The, it, it's it's round, certainly it goes around the sun, and the one that everybody uh, has problems with is clears its orbit. There's there's now a mathematical description um, by an astronomer at UCLA, uh, Jean-Luc Margot, which I think does a beautiful job of, of, of very precisely describing what that means, and this fits well within that criterion. How do you know that uh, that something didn't happen a long time ago that threw all these objects into these orbits uh, a collision or something, but there's nothing there now? So that's an excellent question. Uh, and in fact, the uh, one of the first uh, experiments we did was was to to take the data, like take the observed orbits and leave them alone for for a little while. If you come back in in five hundred million years, this this alignment is gone. Right, so we can't outsource all of the interesting physics here to some event which that happened, uh, you know, in the during the infancy of our of, of our solar system. Something is keeping the orbits grouped right now. On geologically short timescales, these orbits would become randomized mm -hmm. if not for the gravitational pull of Planet Nine. So basically, you're saying you you see the debris and all the, and how it's all arranged in space. You say there must be a planet big enough to make them go into that arrangement, but we don't see it and we don't know where it is. It's, it's, uh, we don't not know, I mean, we don't know where it is. Okay, sure, we don't know where it is. <laughs> Maybe that's the right way to say it. But what we do know is we know its orbit. And what that means practically is that we know its path across the sky. So rather than have to look around the whole sky, which is a big place to look, we can actually look on a fairly, fairly narrow path of sky until we track it down. And in fact, we've even ruled out uh, large portions of that track of sky already with some surveys that we've done. So we are our best guess is that uh, Planet Nine is in the November sky, if you look up straight overhead at midnight in a, on, a, on Thanksgiving Day, you're probably looking more or less in the direction of Planet Nine. And, and so what are they, what's the over-under on, on getting a picture of the planet? Somebody actually seeing it and photographing it. Uh, well, you know, we, we're sort of in the stage of the project where we are beginning uh, our observational search. Uh, this is a, definitely something that Mike is, is leading. Um, you know, but w this sort of requires the uh, requires the use of the largest telescopes in in the world, particularly the, the Su Subaru telescope. Uh, you know, we we believe that it's uh, you know we sort of predict that it's between two to eight years uh, as a reasonable time frame for detection. Mm -hmm. But there 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 is a there is a website which uh, predicts these these things and it, and it gives us odds. Do you know what the odds are on this? Yeah, one? yeah. So there's a website called Metaculus, uh, which which gives us two to one odds that the planets will planet will be pre uh, discovered by the end of 2016. Ooh, I might I might have to bet against that. Wow. Okay, taking it to Vegas. Uh, <laughs> eight four four seven two four eight two five five. Uh, let's go to the phones to. Uh, John, and oh, a very busy place this week, Iowa City, Iowa. Hi, John. John, are you there? Hi, guys. Hi there. Hi, John. Uh, I'm totally excited about this. I'm a complete layman, but uh, I thought it would be interesting an interesting way to, to look for the planet rather than optically, and I know that it's very dim uh, and hard to see optically, would be to look for celestial objects behind it that are dimming as the planet passes in front of it. 
so that's actually a, a great way that people have been finding, for example, planets around other stars these days. The, the bad Hi. news is that uh, the probability of going in front of a, a star is, is minusculely small, and so we would have to get extremely lucky to do it. There are some interesting ideas, though, about using the background stars to look for gravitational deflections of the light as the light goes by Planet Nine, which uh, I actually think is an intriguing idea that might have some possibility. Yeah, people are thinking. Thank you. Yeah, good. Interesting idea. Um, a tweet comes in, says, uh, could this ninth planet, David O'Leary, says, be a dwarf star or a body of dark matter? Uh, so that's, that's an intriguing question. Uh, I think the short answer is no. A dwarf star, we, we would have seen it. Uh, the WISE survey, which completed uh, just about a couple of years ago, would have detected uh, a dwarf star. In fact, uh, that survey has ruled out the existence of, of dwarf stars in the solar system out to something like uh, 20,000 astronomical units, maybe maybe further out. Uh, dark matter is very, very, very diffuse, right? So even the 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 most clumpy parts of dark matter, which are which are hypothesized to exist, ca called caustics, are sort of the the size of the solar system, and they usually amount to about an Earth mass. So so it's unlikely that this planet is is anything other than just uh, a planet made up of regular matter. Well, what made you guys decide to look for it? I mean, just say we're going to go look for a planet. I mean, what was it the it all, it all started out, um, I mean, for me, it, it started 20 years ago. When I started uh, looking at the outer solar system, it was with the idea of finding a planet. And that was the survey that led to the discovery of all the objects that led to the discovery, uh, to the demotion of Pluto. I, I like to say that, that Pluto was collateral damage on the way to trying to find this planet. Um, but, but after the discovery, uh, after the demotion of Pluto, I was pretty convinced there were no planets left to be found. And, and in fact, as my wife will tell you, I was, I, I, I was moping around the house, depressed about the lack of planets in the outer solar system. And then two years ago, there was a, a, a beautiful paper by some of our colleagues, Chad Trujillo and Scott Shepard, who pointed out that there were some strange anomalies going on, gravitational anomalies in the outer solar system that really couldn't be explained. They suggested maybe there was a planet, but uh, their suggestion, uh, nobody could, could make a planet do the sorts of things that they were hoping it would do. So people mostly moved on and didn't think very much about it. But, but I know these guys, and I know that they, they're, they're, they knew what they were talking about. So we looked into it more carefully, mostly to prove that it couldn't be a planet, because that's crazy. Everybody knows there are no planets out there. And uh, this, is, this led to our two years of trying to convince ourselves that it really wasn't a planet, and then realizing, yeah, it really is a planet. Mm -hmm. well, what's been the reaction of your colleagues? Is it skeptical or...? So, you know, interestingly, mostly the reaction has been very positive, uh, especially from uh, our colleagues that uh, that have read the paper. Uh, they're more or less uh, compelled by by the arguments. There has been also a, a bit of skepticism, which, uh, which we are very happy with. I think uh, ideas like this should be met with, with a healthy, healthy dose of skepticism. And, uh, you know, hopefully this skepticism, uh, skepticism will lead uh, some of our colleagues to uh, confirm our calculations and uh, arrive at uh, the same answer. And, you know, mm -hmm. ultimately what we are hoping here is that this theoretical prediction of the orbit will trigger uh, will trigger a hunt, an observational hunt for Planet Nine. That's that's the goal of this paper. I'm Ira Flater. This is Science Friday from PRI, Public Radio International, talking about uh, this unseen planet, a uh, uh, Planet Nine. So you have to hope that somebody will give you some scope time to to go look for it, or somebody will decide. Maybe yeah. So as, as a the way the way astronomy works uh, worldwide is you you write a proposal for you time on a on a telescope, committee reads it gives you the time. I I think we have a a compelling proposal to write, so I'm confident that uh, we'll be out at the telescope soon. Mm -hmm. You've you've uh, put out what you call a treasure map, breaking down where and what people should be looking for. Is this something that conceivably someone with a backyard telescope might see? You know, it's funny. It, it actually, if it were at its closest approach to the sun at, at only only 20 billion miles, it actually could be seen with, with the very largest backyard telescopes, not not just your one that you got at the store for Christmas, but, but people with serious backyard observatories could see it. 
but because it would be so bright, I think we've ruled out that part of the sky. So we're pretty convinced it's it's at its most distant part of its orbit. And at its most distant, it really is going to require the biggest telescopes on the Earth. And what name would you like? You know, that's the first thing. I know we talk about planets all the time. And we get more. I'm looking at the boards on my telephone here. What w- Vulcan, Sagan, what kind of name could we give Planet 9? So our, our working name for, for the time being, aside from Planet 9, is George. Uh, you know, it's a perfectly good name. Uh, you know, my uh, I actually did this uh, exercise earlier this morning where I, I looked at, uh, you know, statistically, uh, the, the kind of average interval between the emails that I get asking to name the planet Bowie, uh, which, you know, it must be... I must be getting coarse because that's starting to sound like a really good idea. Uh, but realistically, you know, it's this is the kind of question which should be left uh, until this mo- this uh, this planet nine is caught on camera. Mm. And when do you think uh, you said perhaps one of you thinks it's by the end of the year we might get a get a picture of it? And- I, I, and I would not so sure. That would make us, we, we would have to be pretty lucky. If we get it by the end of the year, it's probably because it actually is already in somebody's data, that they've taken images, didn't realize it was there, and now they see this and they go back and look. In fact, I, I have already heard from several different teams of astronomers who are, who are frantically going through their old data right now. And you know, so who knows? We could hear about it tomorrow. That seems unlikely. But, but maybe by the end of the year. I, I have been saying that I think it will be found within five years. That seems like a reasonable outside time period. Uh, there, there are places in the sky that it could be that would make it harder than others, particularly if it's sitting right in front of the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy is, is big and bright and kind of makes it hard to see things. But uh, if, if it's not there, it'll be found very easily. If it's there, it'll take us a little more effort. Well, put us on your list for coming back, okay? When you We'd be happy to get a picture, absolutely <laughs> find out what it is, and we'll help you name the planet if you have any. Because well, our listeners have absolutely no problem coming up with names. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm we'll, sure you're flooded with them yourself. But you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's good. It's yeah, good. I it's think good. it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's good for astronomy. Uh, Constantine uh, Batagan and Mike Brown, both in the Division of Geological Planetary Sciences at Caltech in Pasadena. Thank you, and good, happy hunting. 